This is Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Cones on the Hogstein Network. Welcome to Seasons of Discontent, Season 5, Episode 4, brought to you by Rick Snyder's Washington on YouTube. I'm Rick Snyder. And I'm Matt. And we're back discussing all things Washington sports and life as part of the Mighty Hog Stein Network on audio and the Rick Snyder's Washington on YouTube yep. video. Want to see us? So, uh, all right. Since you're back from vacation, while some of us worked, uh, just, we're going to talk Washington football team again. All right. Start off with quarterbacks. You know, I watched practice some. I don't see all of it. Uh, I'd say right now Fitzpatrick is ahead of Heineke as expected. Yeah. But just I just watch who's playing what. Heineke's having some problems with picks. This, this defense is a no mercy deal, man. Although they won't hit the quarterback, so there's something there. But you know, Rivera was saying Heineke makes better plays when he's moving around, and the play what they do here doesn't provide that. And so that's why I, I'll say he throws a good frozen rope. You know, he's got the arms. He doesn't throw it 80 yards downfield, but he's a good intermediate passer. Uh, Fitzpatrick, I've seen him have problems with tip passes on the line. Uh, which is weird. You know, he's tall enough on there, but he's had some of that. Um, neither of them have just wowed me. I mean, Fitzpatrick can get the ball downfield a little better. I've been more impressed with receivers uh, and the combinations going on there. But right now, you know, going into New England uh, on Thursday, you know, Fitzpatrick is easily the starter. Heineke's too. Allen's had trouble with his ankle that was broke last year. He tweaked it again. So he's three. Steven Montez, Maybe he makes the practice spot. I kind of doubt it, but yeah. he's looked a little better on there, but in no way do I ever think he's making this roster. Yeah. And and I've heard that about Fitz and and uh Heineke they're saying is having an issue with touch as far as like you said, those middle to short passes, which we can kind of figure that the you know their their game is gonna consist of a lot of that if they want to utilize Gibson and Logan Thomas, but you know, I've I've heard that the the deep ball from Heineke is very very nice right now, and he's throwing. He threw a uh, I saw it on Twitter. He threw a really nice pass to Deami Brown downfield for a touchdown. Um, I don't know. It'll be interesting. I, I think obviously Fitz was brought in to be the starter. Um, you know, we'll talk about it in a couple of weeks. You seem to think that he won't make it the whole season, and you're not the only one. Um, I do believe he'll make it the whole season, but we'll see. Um. You know, in games, say again, you think he'll start 17 games? He, uh, uh, does that include injury? No, I'm saying, well, he start. there's the bet 17 games. He does 17. I buy dinner at Longhorn <laughs> under <laughs> 17. You buy dinner. You willing to put it up that he starts 17 games now? Yeah. Now, is there an injury caveat? No. Okay, then no, I will not take that bet. All right. Um, I could make it one way or another. <laughs> um, not, do I think he gets benched because he stinks at some point? I, I would give that, you know, till November. I think he has till November. And then we'll see what the record is and where they think they stand. And if they think they need some a change to go like they did last year, you know, then they can go to Heineke there. I will say the one thing with Heineke, he needs to take a little bit off his fastball. Yeah, man, he throws that hard. You need a little more touch. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing. He he has no touch. It's just it's right down. You know, if you're playing Madden, you're holding the throw button instead of just tapping it with with Taylor Heineke. You're standing a foot away from the jugs machine. Boom. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So, but but let me ask you this: with with Kyle Allen, uh, do you think Kyle ends up on pup? Because it seems like he's having some issues with the the surgically repaired ankle. And let me ask you another question. Do you think they go two quarterbacks and then Logan Thomas is your, your third slash reserve? Yeah, if, if, if Kyle is on pup, which maybe, you know, I mean, it's not a bad injury. I think he basically rolled his ankle kind of thing. But it's the uh, surgically repaired ankle. Right, right. So, uh, I mean, he's still out on the field walking around. He's not sitting in a cast or anything. Okay. So, I'll uh, give it two more weeks before I figure that out. But if he's hurt, I think they do. 
well, they put him on pup and probably stashed Montez on the uh, practice squad uh, there. If that happens, uh, you may keep Montez there anyway, and because they like him a lot, it's just you know there's a pecking order. All right, uh, so and, and and one more question for you, and this doesn't really have to do with the team. Well, it does have to do with them, but there's been rumors out there recently that are heating up that that Deshaun Watson is negotiating, or, or the Texans are negotiating with Philly to trade Deshaun Watson. Do, if you're if you're the Washington football team, do you do you make a play for him? I mean, a you don't want him in the division, and you know it seems like a lot of the issues that he's been having have calmed down. I don't know if they settled any of these, you know, the massage parlor stuff that he had going on. Is Deshaun Watson play at, in play for this team? I mean, as a young guy, settles a lot. You know, would probably. <laughs> you know, appease a lot of the fans and solidifies that position for a couple of years, you know, yeah, if, if he's cleared of all the issues that he has. Yeah. I don't see it. I think he's getting suspended by the league at some point. Yeah, I, I think so too. The six games. So that's hard. I don't see them going for him at all. And yeah, you don't want, you don't want to see Philly get him, but I don't see that, but here's the problem for Washington. They can't go get a player with a sex scandal situation. No. Not after, not after the cheerleader scandal. <laughs> yeah. Can't do this. So that alone keeps them out. And by the way, speaking of cheerleaders, I saw the new cheer team. Yeah, but, I saw videos of them at, at yeah. FedEx. I thought it was kind of fun. You know, I mean, they're all hip hop. You know, I thought it was a fun experience. So you can stare at pretty women everywhere. You know, you don't have to have the cheerleaders for that. I'll tell but, you what, too. Yeah, I, and I saw this on Twitter. This is pretty damn refreshing. Tanya Snyder was down in Richmond throwing T-shirts to the fans. Yeah. When, is the, when is the last time that a CEO slash owner of the team, I mean, because that's effectively what she is right now, it was out on the field like meeting and greeting fans for this team. I mean, it's just unheard of, and it's it's actually pretty damn cool, Rick, if you ask me. I would think uh, short of George Preston Marshall, and he never gave away anything. Uh, it's the first time ever, I would think. And I wrote a column for 1067 The Fan where I write about, I think no matter what happens with Dan, Tanya stays the face of this franchise. People like her. They hate Dan. They yeah. like her. So why would you not want to let her still be the front person? And she, you know, she's been involved in backroom decisions. I've had people at the park tell me for about a year and a half. So it's not like she just showed up all of a sudden. Right. Well, and also, I mean, she's always been, you know, associated with the league. Her and D'Angelo Williams were the two that started the Think Pink stuff in October for breast cancer awareness. Now it's, it's you know, obviously it's morphed into the crucial catch where we include all the cancers, but her and D'Angelo Williams were the ones that started that because she is a breast cancer survivor and D'Angelo's mother was a breast cancer survivor. This That's that's something that she started league-wide. I mean, she has influence with the league, and I'm sorry, but she is a better person to put in front of a podium with those three trophies than Dan, because nobody likes Dan. No, and, and everybody thinks he's a, a, a Napoleonic complex, you know, dictator that <laughs> has ruled this team with an iron fist, you know. And obviously with the cheerleader scandal, I mean, you know, that's not good. The stuff that we heard about Dan and the videotapes and all this stuff, that's not somebody that you want to put out there as your representative of your team. And Tanya definitely is. Yeah, I mean, she was throwing footballs in the stand and all. Had decent form. She needs to get her back leg into it more. But I just thought this would never happen with Dan. Dan no. never fans like this ever. I mean, before him, Cook would never have done something. No, like this. Cook wouldn't. You know, before him, ever been at Williams? No, he would have the mobsters do it for him. Uh, and before him, Jack and George Preston Marshall. I don't think he gives away a nickel. So no. So it was the first time, and I like a lot of what I've seen about her. I've I've talked to her once in a blue moon over the years, but I don't really know her because uh, she's never hung around us. Right. But, well, I'm waiting to see when we get a presser uh, with her. I've asked for it. Uh, we'll see. At some point, I think that we will on there. It's it's all positives uh, on there. So I, it, it was interesting. I'll give it that. There's I, definitely I, transparency with, with Jason Wright, it seems. So I would not be surprised if you if you don't get that. Yeah, it'll it'll come. They're trying to sell tickets. They they realize that they they opened the stadium for a Friday night practice. I'm not sure how many people came. It, you know, it wasn't. I think they handed out twenty thousand tickets. I'm not sure they had quite that many. But man, the diehards were definitely there. Yeah, and that's great because before there was no one there 
2019, uh, at the end of the season, it was all you know, other fans. Yeah. So they're trying to court people back, which is a great thing uh, on there. All right. One uh, of the receivers, which I think have looked really deep, uh, with new wrinkle in a way, Curtis Samuel uh, probably won't play the preseason, according to Ron Rivera. He's hoping he might get a snap or two, but you know, he's had a groin injury, which kept him from doing anything in the spring. Yeah. And I have not seen him on the field personally. And he's uh, also had been COVID protocol for a short time. And I just want to say, rah, rah, here we go with this again. I've said it before. If you're not there opening day of camp and things linger, what receivers have we seen this from? You know, Malcolm <laughs> Kelly. I mean, I could make you a list. It always seems that groin injuries are a weird injury. And mm. Since he didn't have surgery to repair it, I don't know. He doesn't make it to opening day. You may put him on the uh, on the injured list coming into the season because they got to figure out how to get all these receivers they have. They have like 12 guys. They have I 13 think- receivers on this roster right now, and there's probably a shot of about, I'd say, eight or nine of them that could be on this team. That was one of the questions that I saw this week on Twitter was, does Adam Humphreys make this team? And I do believe that as long as Fitzpatrick is starter, Adam Humphreys is on this team because he's going to be the security blanket. He has a familiarity with Fitz. You know, so there's one. Obviously, you're keeping Terry. You've got Kelvin Harmon coming back from injury who was, you know. Uh, it's an iffy. I, I know. That. I know. But that's what I'm saying. He was a, he was a guaranteed starter last season. This <laughs> season, he could not make the team, you know. <laughs> Steven Simpson's had a great offseason and training camp, and yet I'm not sure he makes I'm it. I'm not sure he makes a team. Look, you got a guy in Gandy Golden that you drafted just a year or two ago, and I'm not guarantee I'm not gonna guarantee that he makes the squad. There's going to be good players on this wide receiver core that don't make this team just simply because there's no room for them. Yeah, and Max, you know, Max Dillon, um, you know, he's the rookie, he's I don't know that he makes it. I think DeAndre Carter makes it because he's going to play special teams. Yeah, he's going to be your kick and punt returner, so I think he makes it. But he's your sixth wide receiver at this point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's really been interesting. I've watched Jam- Jamin Davis. we just got a couple minutes left. Jamin Davis uh, has looked really good. Good horizontal speed, side to side. I've really been impressed with him. He's, he's playing in the middle a lot. I think that's where he'll play in the end. Uh, final piece of that defense. I mean, his defense – I saw pics of him from Friday night, and that looks like a grown-ass man. <laughs> that is a big he, – he looks the part in that uniform. Let's just hope he plays it. Yeah, he, he's definitely something to watch. And the, and the team managed to finally convince players, you know, we got to do this 85% thing. We got to get some of you in. They've got 25-plus players get, get the uh, vaccine recently to get to that 85%. Because they were, they had seven of them in the first few days of camp pop. And I think they all kind of realized, hey, it's going to be tougher to stay out, you know, this year. General public, all that going on. So I'm glad to see they did that. So, all right. Well, I guess we got to run on all this. Yep. So uh, we'll be back on Wednesday with another podcast about the New England game and getting ready for that. So I'm Rick Snyder. And I'm Matt. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to Seasons of Discontent on the Hogstye Network.